Warning, this video is very old, kinda messy, due to many issues that happened that occurs here. So please ignore any kind of confusing voice over or like wacky edition. I don't know what was going on on that video, not gonna lie. Just let me know if you have any questions about drawing clothing. And if you are a Patreon, we can voice call and I draw and sketch over your art studies to discuss what can be improved uh, and if there are any mistakes, etc. Uh, if not, there will be a recap in part 3. Have fun watching the video! Good day, howdy, hi, hello, how you been? Remember when I said part 2 is in 2 weeks? <laughs> well, I have to make a whole apology video just for that. I didn't say which year though. Straight to the tutorial, and I suggest you watch these two previous tutorials as basics. The first one is how to sketch clothes in general, and second is about lighting and rendering in general too because this tutorial will contain both but I'll still be everything so no worries I will be explaining my way of shading different types of fabric initially I'd call this one normal fabric because well my English sucks and I don't know how most fabrics like this one is called so yeah next one is leather or anything shiny I don't care then fabric with pattern or just multiple colors and lastly transparent fabric or seat through fabric i don't know i got most of these requests from my discord server except the iridescent fabric because i'm still practicing it and i don't want to share something that i'm unsure about i mean i'm still unsure about this whole tutorial as well but i guess it's just my low self-esteem so i'll just shut up and continue explaining but before that i'd love to promote my merch because i literally neglected it and i need cash okay you can get stickers prints of different size shirts and hoodies and a lot of stuff already so please share this with your love rich ones and sugar daddies mommies your grandmas because i deserve support okay and of course if you can afford the merch you can still support me through patreon and cancel at any time starting from three dollars and of course if you can't afford any of these i still love you okay okay enough promoting but Believe me, it's worth it. <laughs> okay. First thing I do whenever I shade anything in my style is to give it a glow using the airbrush to make it stand out and look like it has dimensions because whenever I leave it flat in my art side and how I usually shade skin and hair, this is how I imagine it. This is why I add a darker glow using the airbrush around the edges. It's a simple step that makes a lot of difference if you want to try it depending on your art style. So yeah. Also, let me explain where I usually shade before we move to other steps. Parts that I always shade are always something like on behind. If you imagine the side profile of it, I'll give the example of boobies because uh, like I did last time. So the boob gets all the lights from a bow and hides what's under it. This is why I shade under it and this might not work always in cases like the lights coming from the bottom which will just flip the concept and under the boobs will get all the light and hide what's above it I hope I explained it well next next is another pre-tip before we start actually shading when shading I use this technique of erasing painting erasing painting erasing painting until I get my desired shapes I also use watercolor brushes or any brushes that changes opacity and looks smooth depending on the pressure you give it to it I share these brushes with you so they should be in the card above or in the description I don't know and I guess I explained this in the other video of sketching clothes basically I re-explained them but with color you know how I focus on these parts a lot separation which some people can consider them as line art but for this video i'll just explain it in my art style you don't have to follow every step of this tutorial you can always interpret it in your own art style you know separations have the darkest colors as for those triangles that can also be called diapers folds or something i don't know uh yeah those have saturated colors compared to the normal shading color that i chose in the start and 
and here's how I applied this information in a time lapse. So as you see, I have the sketch above the flat. I apply a gradient using airbrush to give it dimension and to help with the painting erasing tip I've told you. I draw the separations according to how it's showing on the sketch and then I immediately hide the sketch so that I can see the colors better. I drew the triangle thingies with a saturated color and I made sure to follow the tension points. For more information check out part 1 of this tutorial and then I finished with less saturated color to shade other parts and triangle shapes. I start cleaning and rendering using that trick of erasing and painting to get a sharp shapes and the shapes that I really want and not the results like of brush strokes only. This part is also easier with a reference. Don't be dumb like me. For final touches babies, it's color touch time. Post rolls, please don't sue me. I use an airbrush and you can choose any color as long as it's not too saturated or too light. You get the idea of grayish colors when using layer modes with lighting tutorial I made. So make sure to check it out if you haven't yet. You can also use overlay to fix some colors. Make ones darker, makes other like saturated and others lighter. It's really up to you. After that, I add rim lights on the side. Even catch the difference in the last final touch, but I like to add some highlights on it too. It's like the white highlight. Patterns! Patterns! Okay, although over the years and till now, I've been using multiply layer only to shade stuff with more than one color in it. And it does work most of the time, if not all the time when you know how to use it. But well, when it comes to some other art styles, or just some more colorful and fresh vibes that I want to show, especially for complicated pattern. And I'd prefer using HSL. I'll explain my use of HSL only because many people know about like the multiply mode use, and I also explained it in my lighting tutorial. And also because I love to make fool of myself in the internet because HSL can look terrible sometimes or just too cool. It's really up to you, dear artist. Simple start. Just bring a pattern you draw or um you saw, put it above the color block layer, and you use the clipping tool to mask it and to take the shape of that color block. Then use any visible color to shade normally as if there's no pattern at all. After that, click control and click on that specific layer. Then hide the layer. We don't need it anymore. Actually don't delete it. Right click on the hidden layer, a menu will show up. Click new correction layer and then hue saturation luminosity which is the HSL layer I'm talking about. This window will pop up and it's when your time comes. Hue is basically changing the actual colors. Saturation indicates the amount of gray in a color and luminosity or brightness refers to how much white or black is mixed with the color. I lower the brightness and make the saturation higher and I change the hue a little depending on what colors we have and just depending on your liking. We haven't finished yet. Now since I usually add this saturate outline a lot, let me add it to the clothes as well. It adds a lot of spice. With control plus clicking on the black shadows layer that we had, select them again and click on this option that appears in the little bar in the bottom, expand selected area. That's the name of it. Then it will give you this window to adjust the size of this expanded area. And I prefer to go for three to five pixels depending on how big your canvas is. I open the HSL layer again and these are the settings that I use to get that saturated outline. Change the hue a little, a lot of saturation, a tiny bit darker. Now you go back to the older layer, the black shadows we did in the beginning. Control plus click on the thumbnail to select it, then click on the new HSL layers mask. It's the black and white box there and it's shown there. <laughs> then Delete. By the way, fun fact, I recorded this video like a million times. Electricity keeps going off and deleting recordings and art, so I had to redo everything all the time. And yeah, before we finish, sit down, let's have a break. Let's talk about the tablet that Gaumon sent me months ago. You get two USB adapters, a glove, extra nibs for the pen, a mouse pad that has a lot of Photoshop shortcuts print on it, an adhesive foil, and a sleeve for transport. 
support. The included USB adapters are a micro USB to USB A female adapter and a type C to USB A female adapter. So yeah, through these adapters, it's possible to plug the tablet to an Android smartphone or tablet or directly into laptops which only have USB C port. And I tried it and it was so fucking cool. Gaumon M1020. What the fuck? Gaumon M1220. I don't know how to count. Uses the AP32 pen, which is a battery free pen, so you don't have to charge it at all. And it's so comfortable to hold and it doesn't give any friction or annoying sounds when drawing with it. After you install the driver from Gaumon's website, reboot and the pen sensitivity should be working. The tablet is so smooth to draw, it doesn't have big delay, which is what most digital artists look for. It also has many expressions keys where you can put the shortcuts that you use the most and by that it's gonna be closer and easier to reach them when using the tablet. The touch wheel is also so amazing to change the size of your brush or zoom it in or out. Overall, I really like it and I really suggest it as your first tablet. It will save a lot of time. It will save so much time from using a mouse or your finger. And it also will give you the experience of trying many 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 brushes and, and how they react to the sensitivity. It's really cool. Like the brushes I will give you, you really need the tablet to use them actually. Check out the links below in the description for their shop pages and more information. Thank you Gomun for sending me this tablet, it's so cool. And about the leather. No shit, I start with a sketch first to define the folds and general details. Under the sketch, I make a color block. This is a matter of art style, so no worries if you just did line art instead of my next step. With black, I shade the separations based on my sketch, then I just hide the sketch to finish rendering. I shade the edges, letting space in the middle to look like a zigzag and follows the main fold. I use a watercolor brush for this to look smooth and shiny. Then I use any bluish or lavender colors in general to draw highlights in the middle part that I didn't shade and I put that layer to add glow layer mode. I add another add glow layer mode and I just put more highlights in the middle of those I did in the previous step. I use an airbrush to add a little glow on top of the lights I did. I use a dark blue color and I put it on color touch layer mode. And then I add little gray parts on the edges to make it look like a reflection. And it looks more like leather when adding those reflections. And this is a time lapse to help picture things better. As always, if you ever have like any questions about my tutorials, don't hesitate to ask on my Discord server. I'll leave all the contact information in the description below. And last but not least, transparent see-through clothes. I was waiting to show you this because I love how I do it and i was quite excited when i saw people ask about it actually and iku from the future came to interrupt again and say that this is going to be in another part with iridescent and wet clothes it's been more than a year since i started editing this video and redoing it and electricity keep going off and deleting everything till i just gave up on it to just focus on other stuff and my studies so hopefully the next part will be better since i've grown up one year and i've moved like uh i've moved from that residence so electricity is better here see you guys don't forget to check out my stickers they are on sale right now so take yours it's limited and stay tuned for new products, new projects with my brother. Stay updated by following me on Twitter mainly. And of course you can check out my card for other social medias if you don't check Twitter that much. Uh, yeah, see you guys, bye.